All right, folks, it's Ty from dogbehavioronline.com and communicanine.net, and I wanted to go really high tech. I was checking, uh, you know, I realized the other day we've got thousands of uh, Facebook and YouTube and, and email subscribers that I was like, you know what, these guys need a really high tech video to explain a dog training concept here. So I went ahead and got a robotic German Shepherd here that uh, does tricks, and this is a special robot pen. We're going to do some high-tech stuff today. I wanted to share with you some of the reasons why your dog is doing what he's doing and kind of help you understand what you can do to change it. Um, I always tell my clients, picture your dog lives on a spectrum. On one end of the spectrum, we've got calmness. Uh, we've got uh, control, you know, things like that. On the other end of the spectrum, we've got what we call chaos behavior. You know, complete chaos where the dog isn't living in, you know, with calmness and control. Obviously, they're on opposite sides of the spectrum here. And so, um, on this end of the spectrum, we've got things like aggression. Aggression is probably the biggest thing that we deal with. Uh, that's, that's the number one problem that we uh, work with at our company. We've got things like destruction. We've got things like um, hyperactivity. Just overall, just misbehaving, not listening, things like that. All of those behaviors that our clients complain about live on this end of the spectrum. Whereas where the behaviors that they want, calmness, control, structure, live on this end of the spectrum. And so where is your dog on the spectrum? And wherever your dog is, is going to tell me just, you know, exactly how obedient your dog is and, and the types of problems that you may or may not have with your dog. And so when I explain this to people, most people get it. This okay, my dog is aggressive, he lives on this end of the spectrum. He's destructive, he lives on this end of the spectrum. Most people understand that. And so the question becomes, what can we do to push our dog to this end of the spectrum? And so, uh, you know, it depends on the type of problem. With aggression, you know, what's going to push it is going to be things like uh, really advanced obedience. What's going to push it is going to be um, proper, you know, leadership, which also happens to come through obedience. What's going to push it, you know, is going to be, um, you know, leash walking. It's going to be coming when called. It's going to be all these types of issues. And so if we have that with our aggression, we start pushing the dog down our spectrum and we start to see dogs no longer have, they start living over here. Same thing with destruction. Uh, you know, when we've got destruction, we often see a lack of structure in the form of supervision. You know, the dog, you know, this could be the same thing with uh, house training or whatnot. The dog's not supervised. Or we can see, you know, there's a lack of calmness because there's no exercise. Or we can see there's a lack of calmness because the dog, uh, you know, his mind's not getting worked out with obedience. I always tell people you're going to tire a dog out faster through his brain than you are his body. And you can often do that with obedience. And so, like I say, every one of the issues that you're having is because your dog is living on the wrong end of the spectrum. Now, let me make a, a few points here. If your dog is living on this end of the spectrum, and notice he's on the very end of the spectrum, this is also not good. This is a dog that's a robot. This is a dog that's completely controlled, a dog that at every given moment, it, you know, his, his owners are having him do something. We don't want our dogs to live over there. Uh, we want our dogs, you know, if, if there's a middle point, we want our dogs definitely in this half, and I would say probably about halfway between there, you know, to where the dog definitely has calmness, definitely has control, definitely has structure, definitely has obedience, but it's not so much to where, you know, he's this robot that has no joy in life. Now, um, there's times when we can allow the dog to move up the scale here. You know, there's times when, uh, you know, I say, okay, we're going to wrestle with the dog. We're going to let him go up here, but we can't let him get on this end. Yeah, we can wrestle, but we can't get over towards chaos. Or we're going to go out and we're just going to, we're going to play ball and you're going to run around like crazy and you're going to have a good time. Okay, we can let you just climb up the scale here a little bit. But generally speaking, we're going to want to get our dogs down to this end of the scale. Now, how did this come up? This came up because I've had several clients or emails here recently of dogs that, um, you know, they, they're existing in too many different parts of the scale. Um, you know, uh, talking with a client here recently, the dog's doing great at home. But when it comes home from daycare, it's existing on this end of the scale. The daycare is getting the dog up into chaos. And so um, what happens is it's very hard for them to bring the dog back down to the proper end of the scale. Because if your dog is living on this end, it is a very short jump for full-blown aggression. 
Uh, it is a very short jump for eat your couch. It's a very short jump for jump all over your guests and act like a fool when people come over. If your dog is living over here. If your dog is living on this end of the spectrum, look how hard it is for the dog to make that mental leap. Now, of course, you know I'm making this visual, but it, this is very literal in the sense that if your dog is living over here, it is very hard for most dogs to make that mental switch and say, okay, I'm going to be here and now I'm going to go bite somebody. Or I'm going to be living here and now I'm going to go chew something up. Uh, I'm going to be living over here and now I'm going to act crazy. It just generally doesn't happen that way. So like I say, when we're talking about obedience, obedience, leadership, I often bring out uh, one more thing for my clients here. And, uh, you know, I bring out a seesaw. And I say, okay, we've talked about the spectrum. Now let's talk about a seesaw. On one end, we've got chaos. And on the other end, we've got control. And so what most people find is that when their control is up, their chaos goes down. Meaning, you know, when, when let's say there's nobody around, nobody's ringing the doorbell, no, there's no dogs around, the chaos is down, it's very easy for them to have control. Their dog sits, their dog lies down, their dog stays, etc. But the second, for most people and most dogs, the second the chaos goes back up because somebody rang the doorbell, because there's another dog, because etc., etc., their control comes right back down. And as a result, the dog goes over to this end of the spectrum. And so this right here is the big challenge. This is the reason that uh, I have a job, that uh, our company is in existence, is because this is not easy. You know, when there's distractions, when there's uh, things going on, it's very hard for you to push your control up even in the face of distractions. And so, like I say, that's where we, where we have a job. Now, I've met plenty of people over my lifetime and over my career that have been able to do this, but again, all this scribbling here points to the fact to where you want your dog living over here, and um, you want to do that through leadership, obedience, structure, proper supervision, uh, proper confinement when you're gone, things like that. And if you can do that, your dog lives over here, your dog is happier, you're happier. Now, what I want you to do is, if you're watching this on Facebook, go click the link, um, and you'll, you'll find this video on another page. And if you need help, um, you can get yourself added on my calendar, and we'll have a quick phone conversation. Uh, or if you're not living in Utah, uh, you, can, you can head over and uh, you can check out some of the DVD programs that we have that help your dog move from this end of the spectrum to that end of the spectrum. Uh, regardless, I, I would encourage you to, to really think on this, really kind of think where your dog exists and what you can do to start pushing your dog to the end of the spectrum that is positive. It's the end of the spectrum that's conducive with good behavior. Stuff like this, calmness, happy dogs, dogs who come when called, that all lives over here. And so you want your dog over here. So <laughs> a lot of chicken scratch here. Hopefully it's made sense as we've gone along. I encourage you to like comment and share on this if you're watching on Facebook or to uh, share it around if you're watching it on the website. But I appreciate you listening and uh, get your dogs on this side. Happy training.